Hey everyone, this is Rick. Uh, this video started off as being sort of a uh, showing how I get rid of spine ticks in my Batman 423 and how I break it out of the, um, the slab and what to do about it, but it quickly became a story of me wanting to investigate again, yet again, I've done this before, how the temperature comes down over time within a heat press and how that's important to preventing reversion. Um, reversion, of course, is the recurrence of the spine ticks or the wavies over time after you send it off to be graded comes back like and this big question is how long does it take and i've been saying well you know let it come to ambient temperature and people say well how do i know when it's at ambient temperature so well well let's measure and see and let's see how much of a difference does it make with the boards and not now conventional wisdom is and i haven't yet proven this but I'm, I'm, lots of empirical evidence that suggests that the longer it can take to come to ambient the better it is and that the aluminum boards help with that better it is meaning the fewer versions that we have like it's it's trained it's it's getting flat and then you know we know that time helps leaving it there forever helps but we can't leave it in our hop and our press forever we also know that letting it come back to temperature slowly uh back to ambient temperature slowly is helpful and then we cold pressing is helpful so we're trying to get we're trying to pin down some times on all of that stuff and um, it's you know I've been saying 24 to 72 hours if it's really bad it looks terrible um, I'd say 72 hours if you have some small spine ticks 24 hours is probably enough for a cold press uh, some people say less some people don't even do it I don't know it, it's not hard and fast rules because there are, are you know <laughs> it's a handful of exceptions to every rule but this is uh, this is me exploring that with aluminum boards and a cold press board and sort of how I'm going to collect that data, how how to build those models. I do the I let it I let the same book come back to ambient in my home with my press, you know, my book. How long that takes with and without the aluminum boards, and how much of a heat sink and insulating device uh, are they really? And so this is that, and then look for the rest of the uh, Batman video, uh, 423 video later, which uh, went well, but I had an unpleasant surprise. So. Uh, I think. Well, it, it went medium. I'll say how's that. All right. Take care. Enjoy the video. So here's the experimental setup. This is my, my data logger and I have my comic book here and I have, there's a chamfer pressing board there. And I just took this little thermocouple and I just put it right underneath the chamfer pressing board there. Like just touching the book, right? That's that's how that looked. And then I put the, I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can show you how I put the sandwich together. Then I put aluminum pressing board on top. Well, I actually didn't just put aluminum pressing board. Then I put silicone sheet, and then I put a backing board. That. Then I put aluminum pressing board on top like that and it's a sandwich because there's one underneath it that was preheated so you can see there's a silicone pad aluminum pressing board I have a little bit of uh, sort of Teflon paper here and then on top of that is a piece of paper and then the comic book and then, the, then there's a uh, there's a chamfered pressing board in the book silicone sheet on top regular backing board and now I have this aluminum sheet and then the whole thing gets pressed and that's that's for testing one with the aluminum board and for test two there was um there's no i just took the aluminum boards off and i just had the silicone pad underneath i left that in place and that was test number two and then we just see how long it takes now we want it to take longer the slower it can come back with you know within reason to ambient um the less we typically see reversion. We don't know how long it takes, but uh, we understand that this does work great with them. So we're taking that time as, as, a, as the time we want. So if you wait until your book gets to ambient and you know, you're doing it slowly, so we'll take 75 as the temperature because we don't want to be there all day. And that's about two hours, right? Of getting back time. This one is actually got a lot of stuff out of that book. That's good. Okay. but. Um, then we're just going to cold press. I just take my cold press board, which is this mamma jamma here, and I just put this on here. How much time and temperature? 
Well, I've been saying at least 24 hours. I say uh, 24 to uh, 72 hours, and I don't really have a good model for it, but I'm trying to develop that model. So I'm, I'm doing the trade-offs between time and pressure. I'm developing those equations, and this will tell me at this lower pressure, which I'll know the pressure because I know the surface area of the book and the weight of this board, how long do I need to keep it from reverting? Right now, I know it's 24 is good. I can get that down to 12 with a little bit of pressure if it's directly on the spine, but that's how I put my cold press board here. And it's kind of cool because now you can also see it, right? You can see the book the whole time, which makes it kind of fun. But um, that's the Elite uh, Ultra board, actually the Ultra Pressing board there. And I like it. And we'll just wait. And then I just give that a day and then they'll prevent the reversion. So uh, in case it, I didn't make it clear in this experiment, um, we just heated a comic book up to 160 degrees and then flipped the switch off and then monitored the temperature as it came down. So that's the whole experiment and this is the, the data. Okay, so this is our result here. It's our uh, the same pressure. So this is called our adiabat, we call it. There's another one at the same temperature, we call it an isotherm. So what we wanna do is say, okay, when does this thing come to STP? which is our standard, uh, or sorry, just, just standard pressure, which is our standard temperature, which is 75 degrees. It's about 7,000 seconds. So it's just under two hours before this guy comes back down. And that'll really help this sort of, you know, strength lengthening this guy out here really helps to prevent reversion. The longer you can spend at the temperature and the longer it, um, it's, it, the slower it gets there, the, e the better it is for reversion. That's just empirical. And if you want to say my actual, it's, it's, it's not changing basically, I've gotten to my my ambient temperature, it's about 18,000 seconds, that's five hours. That's so two and five hours. Those are both long periods of time and neither one of them is the short time people want to leave these things in the press till they get to, you know, it might only be, let's say if you wanted to get to, let's say you only wanted to leave it in there for 10 minutes, you'd only be back down to 140 degrees, right? So yeah, where do you pick and how do you, what's the trade-off for cold press time? Well, right now I don't have hard data on that. I just have empirical data, but I am building a pressure sensor so I can build a series of these lines at different pressures. And then we can use that series of lines to build a model using something called the Arrhenius law to, um, you know, that sort of a activation energy trade-off model to tell us what the trade-off is in cold pressing. Right now, I know it's empirically, it's um, at low at lower pressure, at just a you know, little bit of pressure and ambient temperature, it's about three days for me, cold pressing that really prevents it. But if you spend more time here, you, you spend your five hours here, you can get that down to you know, 12, to, 12 hours to one day, so it depends on how busy your your press is. But we'll run this one more time, and then we'll take a look. We'll also take a look at our book. I'll take a look. I'm in my calendar. I'm taking a look at the book first, and then running this one more time, but without the aluminum sheet. So this is with aluminum. This is with thick aluminum sheets, and we'll take a look at what this looks like without it. All right. Let's see. Um, let's see what we got here. We have this first set of data. On top is the with aluminum board data. I can turn that off. And the second one, so this blue one on top is with the aluminum heat press boards. The this is the like sort of temperature decay. This is without the aluminum heat press boards. It's a really steep beginning, I think, here you can see. And then it's sort of I think that's just the heat that it was losing just naturally. This this little band is just lack of insulation. This is just the uh, the heat that was flowing out of the system constantly while we were keeping the temperature on. It. Right about here, I think we hit the like the thermal reserve of the, the body of the, the silicone pad underneath it itself. Down here, you, this is where I took the thermocouple out and just left it running for a minute, so it got a little colder. So um, I just didn't turn it off in time. But you can see the temperature decay. Now let's look at some differences in, let's look at just the top one, I think. How do I make it? Oops. If I want to look at here, so when the top guy hit ambient, 
and this was this is 67 uh, was or 68 sorry 67 was my ambient temperature so I shut it off then I didn't want to wait you know forever five hours like the other one so um, you can see that at the same amount of time the other board the other one was 83 degrees still it was cooling and this one had another um, you know hours to go until it um, until it hit ambient temperature so there's the difference if we look at this a little bit differently some different ways to view it are we can look at um, let me see you can add the legend here so this is neat and this is with the aluminum board is blue and I think you can see that there but let's see here's the integral here's the area under the curve so here's the same amount of heat leaving the system right how much heat how, this is under the area under this is the time at temperature and we can think of it as heat it's how long it's taking to, to leave the system. And this, this is the area under that curve. Let's see what else, another way we can look at this. Let's turn off the view integral. Let's look at a fit. Let's do a curve fit. This will help us to model it, right? We want to, we want to develop these models and see what they look like at different pressure, pressures and with different materials. So let's say we could look at, well, this is going to be natural log almost certainly fit. There we go or natural exponent fit. So that's a good fit, right? So we actually see these, uh, we want to see these equations. We can actually fit this. That's actually a great fit. <laughs> it's actually, it's a natural log decay. Uh, and you can see that it's predicting the, um, I didn't turn off the integral yet. All right, so I was able to turn off the um, that integration stuff. So let's let's look at these curve fits here. So let's do a curve fit. And we want it to be, it looks like that, exponent it's going to be an Arrhenius law thing it makes me really confident that we can apply Arrhenius rules to do a model here and that's great so now it even tells us here's the expo here's the equations for the curves right so we have uh, we just have to get these coefficients a is uh, so a is equal to the exponent of C minus X plus B that's the uh, that's the bottom one and then these coefficients here are these are how we're gonna be able to model these decay curves so for different materials and even at different pressures, we'll be able to, to figure this out. So if you want to see this, you know, what this looks like, we'll just kind of drag this up here and I'll show you. So look at this curve. The equation is for the first one, it is meaning the blue guy. Uh, well, in both cases, sorry, it is Y equals, um, it's going to be a times e to the power of, uh, whoops, I think I'm drawing a straight line, to the power of negative c times x, right, plus b. So these are the coefficients we have. Let me erase this a little bit. So we can maybe predict this. So the coefficients of a, b, and c are different for the two, right? So we have a, b, and c, and for the aluminum, and then no aluminum. For no aluminum, it is 91.16, 56.06, and that's the r, uh, and c is 0.4 times 10 to the minus 4, 4 uh, times 10 to the minus 4, we'll just say. And the other guy is 95, 66, it's 95, whoops, 66, and 3.6 times 10 to the minus 6, times 4, uh, 66, and 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4. This should have really been 4.5. So we have some differences that we can now, we can now model, right? This is aluminum and no aluminum. And we can now look at this and say, okay, here, here's the differences we have. And then now that we have that, we can start saying, okay, what do we need? We can start modeling it. Oops, where'd it go? We can start saying, where do we, what do we need to actually get this done to prevent reversion? We can try different models and see what, what the time is that stops it. So now we have a way to look into this for the first time. So if we look at curve, if, we were, if this were linear, you can see, really see a difference in slopes there. Um, so yeah, well, that's kind of fun. That's what we can do with that. Uh, and that's all.
So what did I use in this video? I get asked a lot, so I'm gonna start adding that more. I used the Tussie 12 by 15 heat press, not the, not the uh, fulcrum clamshell type, but the top spring-loaded one. I have a uh, LabQuest 3 data acquisition device with a flexible uh, medium temperature thermocouple. I used, um, these are the things I do sell. This is my heat press board. It's uh, 5052 aluminum. This is the thicker Elite one. I used two of those. I used the thicker craft silicone paper. I used the chamfered uh, pressing board that has one edge uh, formed to the shape of the spine of the comic book. And I used, lastly, I used the, uh, this is my cold press board. That is all I used to make today's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take care. Have fun. Bye-bye.